have someone. We're live right now. No one's here yet. <laughs> Can you even see the screen? Yeah. I can't even see my phone screen outside. <laughs> we have Charles here. <laughs> oh, seven people. Hey everyone, welcome to our live e-bike demo. We're uh, in the parking lot of the 630 corporate headquarters in San Clemente, California. We're just gonna stand by as some people filter in and uh, then we'll get to the to the e-bike demo. You can see we got some great weather. I got Alana with me here today. Hi guys. And uh, standing by to answer questions and comments. We're gonna take some of the questions, answer them live. And then we've got Ark and Hannah also back in the office who are gonna be doing live typing for questions and things like that. So we'll try to keep up with them as they come. And we got Nate on the camera. It's back there. He's gonna be telling us the questions and uh, doing the best he wants. So anything you want us to do, say, questions you want answered as we're doing this, don't hesitate, pop them in there in the chat. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to them. We have 55 people now. Awesome. We're also doing a giveaway. So to enter the giveaway, the form is in the comments. Our team will post it periodically so you don't miss it. You just have to enter while you're here in the live. If you leave before the end and you're the winner, you'll still be the winner. <laughs> we won't pick someone else, but stick around because it's going to be fun. Yeah. And if you guys are wondering, these are our microphones. <laughs> They're a little bit funny looking, but they work good wirelessly with the phone. Alana's got one on too. I still feel like I'm having to yell for some reason, but <laughs> hopefully you guys can hear us okay. So what time is it, Nate? It is 12.02. 1202. Let's give another, people. what's that? 65 people. All right, let's wait another one or two minutes before we kind of like start doing the full demo. But you can see we've got one of each of our e-bikes except for the electric tricycle, um, which we don't have available now. They're out of stock, but they'll be back in soon. So right here we got our Every Journey fat tire e-bike with the four inch tires, our around the block men's e-bike, Round the block women's e-bike, every journey, um, women's with this our standard tire, which is a uh, 1.95 inch, and then our men's every journey e-bike as well. And these are all 500 watts. Some of these, the AT, the around the blocks and the every journeys do come in 250 watts, um, but we'll be demoing just the 500 watt today. You're not going to notice much of a difference as we demo them, so. Not a big deal. All right. Those, tires <laughs> Those are some big tires. All right, I'm gonna throw my helmet on here. We wanna practice good safety measures. 18 and over, you don't technically have to wear helmets, but check your local city state laws. So, all right. You want me to come to you or you wanna come over here? Come over. Okay, cool. So, fat tire e-bike. Let's get this demo going here. All right. So I threw, we got a new uh, 630 cell phone holder too. It's on our website, check it out. It's good because it's nice and big. I got the Note 10 here, so I just threw that up here. If you want to track on the 630 app, it's a little shameless plug there, download the app too. Put that right there. So let's take you through here. We got our display right here. You're just gonna push this power button on. Boom, your display pops up. And you've got a throttle here. So you can push this and go without pedaling at all or you can do the pedal assist and you can see right here that's your pedal assist level so you would just click this button to add more assistance or remove assistance totally up to you if you do the throttle this number does not correlate to the power output at all so something to just keep in mind you got your battery charge there and your total trip so let's take it for a spin i'll show you also, one quick thing I'll just mention on the back, there is a switch under the battery, and if that switch is not turned on, I don't know if you can see it up in there, maybe not. Yep. If that's turned off, the display won't work. So, let's just show you. So, I mean, cool thing about what we've tried to do is, do you wanna get over there as I start riding, or? Yeah. All right, cool. All 
All right. So we've tried to make our bikes, our e-bikes, look as much like bikes as possible, um, just so they fit in a little bit better. The designs are a little sleeker. So I'll show you a couple things. I'm going to go into Pedal Assist 2. If you've never ridden an e-bike before and you, do, you start with the motor on and you're doing Pedal Assist, it can catch you a little off guard because once you start pedaling, the motor kicks in and it can be a pretty aggressive jolt. So I'll just put it in two. And then another thing I'll mention is we've got the gears too. So if you're going to start out in pedal assist, we're in, we're in uh, speed one, so that's good. So it'll be a little easier for me to pedal as I get going. But you, uh, if you've never ridden an e-bike, start in <laughs> pedal assist one and go really slow because the initial propulsion from the motor can be a little alarming. So just start pedaling, and there it goes. See, it kicks in. And then when you stop, <laughs> and then when you, when you are in pedal assist, I don't know if the camera could see, like, how much it actually kicks in, but when you just start coasting, the motor actually totally cuts out. So... In pedal assist, you've got to be pedaling for the motor to do anything. Now, I'll show you guys the throttle. So like I said, it's right here. This is kind of fun. I like to use the throttle just to get going a lot of times because it's, depending on if you leave your bike in like seventh gear, it can be harder to get going um, from a standstill. So if you just use the throttle, it just gets you moving a little bit and you're off. And you can see right there, already I was up to 10 miles an hour. Um, so here, maybe shoot me down here and I'll kind of show you guys how fast you can go. All right, let's see. So if you've never ridden an e-bike before, one thing you may want to do is just get a little momentum first and then you can start pedaling and then watch, you'll see, see it kick in, and you're off. And I was already up to almost 18 miles an hour just in that little uh, span right there. And then once you get to higher speeds, I, I kicked it into seventh gear. Because if you're in first gear and you're going 17, you're going to be pedaling like faster than the... You're, you're not going to be actually doing anything. You're just going to be pedaling and the motor will be, you know, propelling you. So you want to get into the higher gears as you start to go faster. How easy is it to switch from man power to e-bike e power like full throttle yeah or like just oh super easy so here i'll show you something else too watch this come here so one thing you can also do is take this down to zero okay so now that we're in zero we can actually just so now we're we're riding the bike as normal no power at all and then I'm going to put it into level one, okay? And you see that? You see the little kick? And then let's just say I want to go back to nothing. I'm into zero now. I'm just riding like normal. And then if you don't even want to do pedal assist, <laughs> let me turn around this way, then you can film me. So now I can just hit the throttle, and then I can just... Oh, actually... I take that back. For the throttle to work, you do have to be in level one at a minimum. So I got to put this into one, kicks in, then I can do the throttle. So it's just a matter of pressing one button really to take you from manual to pedal assist. And then once pedal assist is on, you can always engage the throttle if needed or if you want to. 
we want to see how it charges. We've got a charger here. Sure. Charging is super, super easy. Now, um, okay, so uh, if you want to come over here, Nate, or yeah. uh, right here is your charging port, and Alana has the charger. All you'll literally do is plug that into the wall plug your this the cord will obviously plug in here and then you'll just put that in and you're charging so this plugs in here this goes into the wall and then you can charge your battery while it's here on your bike but you can also remove the battery take it inside or into your garage or wherever and charge it there too so the battery locks in with a key here let's show them on a on this, this one actually the the men's every journey has the key So here's the, the key is in, you have to turn it and hold it to slide the battery out. Yeah, pull it all the way out. So the benefit then obviously is you can take the battery with you. So if you rode to work, bring the battery upstairs, charge it in any you know normal outlet, and then bring it back down. Same to lock it in place, turn the key, hold it. That way it doesn't slide out while you're riding. Yeah, actually, you gotta. Oh, did I knock it all the way? Yeah, you gotta pull it in. There we go. Would these be good for a person that has a lot of hills in their area? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, doing hills and whatnot. And I'll just I'll go ahead and demo this one for you. So this is the Every Journey. Uh, I guess we could call it standard tire, but doing hills. I mean, you know. If you do it on pedal assist and you do a light pedal, it's like effortless to get up the hill, or you can do the full throttle. Actually, if you check out our YouTube, Nate and I did a ride through Laguna Beach, and I did full throttle up and down a lot of hills on the coastline. And, I mean, yeah, we went 21 miles just using the throttle the whole way. How far can you get on one charging battery? <laughs> so that's, there's a lot of variables, just like electric cars. Um, it's a range depending on the rider size, the conditions, the terrain, um, and then whether you're doing pedal assist or throttle. And then also if you're doing pedal assist, what level of the pedal assist are you using? If you're on a level five and you're going 20, you know, 22 miles an hour, you're gonna burn the battery a lot faster. So I would say on average, the range is gonna be anywhere from 15 to 45 miles, depending on the mix of throttle and pedal and all those kind of things. Um, yeah. Other questions or should I proceed with? Proceed. All right, cool. So just like the fat tire, now the fat tire one's gonna be ideal more if you're gonna do some trail stuff or off-road, but the fat tires give you a super cushy ride and it's really going to like absorb rocks and curves and bounces. Alana actually likes the fat tire and it does turn heads too. I mean, people look at that thing and the tires are absolutely huge, but the thinner tire is going to roll a little smoother. It's not going to kill the battery as quick because with the fat tire, you're dragging more rubber. So it's something to think about. Um, so if you're going to be doing a lot of pavement, I recommend a thinner tire, but same thing. This one's got a little bit different of a display. The functionality is almost identical, but um, we're, tr we're trying out new displays with new models just to kind of get a sense, you know, of what people like to see. But we started with a smaller one just to keep it a little bit more incognito. And um, yeah, same thing. So you can see, I'll put this in pedal assist four and you guys will see when I start pedaling how aggressive of a of a pickup it gives me. So you start, just wait a second. There it goes. Sure. 
and I don't know if you guys can hear me from this far away, but uh, yeah, it's super fun. I mean, just to cruise like this and use the throttle, you know, it's nice to be able to take a little break. How far away can the mic go, do you know? The mic? I don't know. <laughs> and does it stay connected when I come back? I'm thinking it does. Okay, <laughs> cool. They seem to hear you. All right, cool. If you guys can't hear us, let us know. I just don't know when I go in and out of the range. So someone was asking about the safest way to start. Um, I've done a video on this on mounting an e-bike and riding it for the first time. So I always recommend starting with your bike off because what's happened to me before and what could be potentially dangerous is if your bike is on, if while getting on you accidentally hit the throttle, it could jolt forward and then a pedal hits your shin or anything could happen. So always start with your bike off. Um, if you have a low step through frame like the Every Journey, you can just step through. And I also recommend actually holding the brakes so your bike doesn't move. You can and step Alana, through. how tall are you? I'm 5'1", so I'm pretty short. Um, but I like both the Around the Block and the Every Journey. They both work for me. So from here, you can turn your bike on. And with e-bikes, I find the easiest way to start is to just hit the throttle and let it take you. You don't have to worry about catching your balance or making sure your pedals are in the right place or getting enough of enough leverage to push off. You can just hit the throttle and you don't really have to worry about balancing at all and then just start pedaling. I find that's the easiest way to mount, but if you are wary of using the throttle or nervous about using it for the first time, you can just set pedal assist to one or even zero and start off like a regular bike. So just back pedal your pedals so that one of them is in about like this 45 degree angle so you can push off easily and then get going. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. I'm 5'10", by the way. So if anyone just want to frame a reference how, I, how someone 5'10 would fit on the bikes. Another thing, too, that I would recommend possibly is put your feet down. Now, I, I like the seat kind of high. You don't have to be this high off the ground. But you can just kind of tap the throttle a little bit and get a feel for, like, how it's actually going to move you. And then just, you know, be comfortable with the balance. And as you get more comfortable, you can accelerate more. We like to say push, push, go. Huh? We like to say push, push, go. So that's when you kind of push <laughs> off with your feet. Well, a lot of likes. And say then push, coast. Push, go. <laughs> I think they use that to teach <laughs> little kids how to ride a bike. Riding in the rain? Just um, is like the battery okay in the rain? And... Yeah, I mean, all the electronics for the most part should be okay now. Uh, I, I'm a member of a lot of different Facebook groups that are e-bikes and things like that. And I've seen people do things like put plastic bags over their controller. You know, if we're talking about a light range, sure, no problem. And the battery in particular should be fine. Um, it's totally enclosed. But, you know, things like the controller, is there a chance water gets in there? You know, absolutely. Um, I can't say it's 100% waterproof. But the battery of all things most likely will be totally fine. The controller, you know, you could put a bag over it to protect it. It also really depends on what kind of rain we're talking about. Torrential downpour, I definitely wouldn't, you know, have my bike out in that. Nor do many people want to ride in a torrential downpour anyways. But, um, yeah, light mistings, things like that, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Someone wants to know if you're comfortable sharing your weight. Sure. I'm about 215. So 215, 510. Um... We typically say 300 pounds is the limit, but you know, in saying that, I know people over 300 pounds have been fine on our bikes, especially with the e-bikes actually versus standard bikes. The e-bikes use a thicker gauge spoke, so the wheels are gonna be much stronger, and that's a lot to do with because the motor is actually in the rear wheel, so you gotta use a thicker spoke, um, a thicker gauge versus the standard bikes have a thinner gauge, so the wheels won't be as strong. So they're going to be able to support heavier weight. Um, in addition to that, uh, the only other thing you may experience issues with are your seat. Just the springs getting squeaky or things like that, depending on the use, 
and how often you use them and the kind of bumps and things. But um, I, you know, I would venture to say 350 pounds is safe. And then again, like like me, I'm a little bit of a bigger guy. So when I ride with buddies, let's say Nate, who's 160 pounds, I'm gonna find that I can't go as fast as him, uh, or my battery's gonna die a little bit quicker. You know, and that's just unfortunately the reality of the motor having to work hard harder to push me versus someone who's 160 pounds. Which is the lightest out of all these? So the lightest two would be the Every Journey or the or sorry, the Every Journeys. Those are actually aluminum frame, whereas the Around the Blocks are steel frame. So these two on the end here. You want to demo the Around the Block? Sure. Someone's asking me if you know how to pop a wheelie. <laughs> no. I'm still trying to learn how to bike with no Our hands. liability insurance doesn't cover for wheelie accidents. <laughs> That's another thing too, to just like, e-bike accidents are real. I see it a lot. So like being, getting yourself familiar with how the e-bike operates. And I definitely don't advise like bikes like this too, like cruisers are not really good for that kind of riding just because of the weight of them. And um, especially having a battery in the back, you know, if you're doing a wheelie, it's going to put a lot of weight in the rear. But anyways, e-bike accidents are real, so familiar, familiarize yourself with it before using, and um, make sure you understand the power before getting too crazy out there. Uh, which one's this one? So this is the women's around the block right now. I have it at pedal assist one. Um, I'll just pedal normally so you can maybe you can see when the pedal assist kicks in. Ready? I don't know if you saw that, but similar to when Dustin was riding, there's a little jolt to the ride. Um, I keep pedal assist at one or two, and usually that brings me to like around 11 to 15 miles per hour, depending on how much I'm pedaling, which I feel like is a, a safe speed. I don't really like to go faster than that, especially in LA where I am typically biking. But then when we are on a closed trail or a less busy area, I'll kick up the pedal assist to four or five, which can be really helpful, especially for hills. So it's really fun. <laughs> and then I always use the throttle to cross intersections. I just like to get out of the intersection as quickly as possible. So that's one instance when I'll pretty much almost always hit the throttle. It's a cute bike. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you guys the men's one. So same bike, men's version. The difference between the around the block and the every journey, a little bit different frame setup. So if you can see the down, the seat tube connects directly to the pedals. Um, so it's gonna be more of like a upright, straight up and down ride traditional bike. The Every Journey, if you can see the angle on that seat tube, it actually moves the pedals a little bit more in front of your hips. So it's a little bit more of a relaxed riding position. And then also you can be a little lower to the ground while still getting some proper leg extension when riding. So the benefit is like if you're not comfortable mounting and dismounting, that bike's going to be easier to get on and off, easier to stop. You can have your feet flat on the ground when stopping. So this one, it's not... Oh. What's the difference between steel and aluminum pros and cons? So an aluminum bike's going to be lighter. So what that means is it's basically more efficient. Um, you're going to get more miles per charge. It's not carrying as much weight. The steel frame's a little heavier. In terms of how you're going to notice it when riding, it's going to be very hard for the average person, to be honest. Um, but I do feel like sometimes riding the aluminum, it feels easier, lighter. You know, with a motor, you're going to eliminate a lot of that. But if you are going to plan to have an e-bike and use it as a regular bike, I would recommend the aluminum because you're going to be adding a lot of weight with the battery and things like that. So if you have an aluminum frame, it'll feel more like a traditional bike. The other benefit, and I'll show you guys right now, actually, why not? We can just go ahead and this one's having some kickstand issues, but you can actually just go ahead and take the battery out. So we'll just do that. And then 
honestly, it doesn't. Once you take the battery out, because the battery, you've you've clearly got the motor in the rear here, which adds you know eight, ten pounds. But the battery also weighs about eight to ten pounds. So you take that out of there, and I'm not going to turn on the motor at all. You can see I'm in seventh gear now, so getting started is a little bit difficult, but it's really like a normal bike. So it's like, you can see I'm not really exerting and I'm just riding it normal. So if there are days you wanted to just go out for like a traditional bike ride and not have to worry about carrying the extra weight, it's awesome. I mean, that's what's so cool about e-bikes, especially like ours, where we try to make them like traditional bikes is they're so versatile. And as opposed to having an e-bike, Alana, can you grab the battery? Sure. Like as opposed to having multiple bikes, you could just have one. How many speeds for a, uh, for a regular pedaling? So ours come with seven. So then we'll just click it back in and now I'll just turn it on and we can be back. I'll just use the throttle and we're back to e-bike. Right, so these right here we have one of each model, but they all come in various different color combos. So the bike that I use the most is the Every Journey, but the color I have is the Periwinkle Blue, which I think is the cutest. <laughs> but they all come in a lot of different cute color combos, so check them out on the website. There's really something for like every style. Yeah, I'll park this one. A question that we get pretty frequently is, can you work out with an e-bike? And I always answer yes, definitely. And I prefer working out with an e-bike because I tend to go hard in the first half of my <laughs> exercise and then I just wanna kind of chill or take it easy for the second half. So having the ability to turn on the motor and do that makes it a lot easier to work out. Also, if you live in a really hilly area, and you don't necessarily want your workout to be biking uphill, maybe you're focusing on speed or something else, then having the motor and being able to use the throttle or pedal assist is really gonna help with that. What, uh, what model is the fat tire? That's the Every Journey. And that also comes in a men's in matte black. And then, did we do a teal? I think we did a teal too for women's. So, teal and navy, and again, I mean, the men's has a higher frame, but the reality of all bikes now is they're gender neutral. Anybody can ride any bike. If you like the color and it'll fit your body, then it's totally up to you. Um, I was going to say, too, if you download the 630 app, you can actually check out the feed and the leaderboard. And we now offer the feature to, to track rides either as a standard bike or an e-bike. So you can actually see how people are using certain products um, and if you have the app please add your bike to it so when you take a ride it will show other riders what bike you're using and for anyone that doesn't have a bike it'd be pretty cool because you can go in there and see oh they rode 10 miles on the every journey electric and it'll give you a sense of how people are using what kind of routes they're doing on their e-bikes things like that so yeah it could be super beneficial and then right after this i'm going to log a quick ride on one of the e-bikes back up the hill here and I'll post it to the feed so you guys can check it out. Um, yeah, join the app, be a part of the community. Can you clean these other color tires? You can. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, the more you ride it, they're going to get dirty, but there's some good tire cleaning products. Tire cleaning? Yeah, we'll add that to our YouTube channel. But absolutely, I mean, the, the problem with a cream tire is every time you take it out, it's going to get immediately dirty. So you're going to be fighting a pretty large uphill battle doing that. But yeah, you know, you can clean them up. We kind of like, it's kind of a struggle when you go through the design phase because the cream will look really nice, but you know the minute it rolls out onto the street or something, it's dirty, you know? What are your handles on the app? <laughs> 
Oh, mine's uh, Geigs 81. I'm Alana. If you look at the electric leaderboard, am I on the leaderboard right now? I think I am. I think we both are. I'm not this week. Oh, <laughs> slacker. I'll log a ride, don't worry. Um, yeah, I think I'm Geigs 81, so follow us. And we just added a bunch of new features. We're gonna keep improving the app, getting better, and, and any features you guys have that you think would be cool for the community, we're open to adding all that, so um, yeah. I'm just thinking what else we can show. Any other questions? Anything you guys want to see us do? Except pop a wheelie? Any kind of demo? <laughs> well, funny enough, there might be. We're actually... And I don't know for any of you guys that know, we're like right next door to Camp Pendleton in California. I don't know if Nate can show the uh, Black Hawk helicopters here. But San Clemente is right next to Pendleton, so you get a lot of military aircraft flyovers, bomb testings and stuff. So we do have our headquarters here in San Clemente. Um, from time to time, we arrange some test rides. We're trying to figure out if the demand is big enough opening up the showroom here for test rides because um, I know that's important to a lot of people so anything else what time is it it's 12 30 if okay here let's do something okay. fun ready for this <laughs> you keep them busy okay don't forget if you have not uh, filled out the form fill it out now before I guess before we finish, because I'll be picking the winner at the end, you don't necessarily have to be here to win. Um, uh, the f when you fill out the form, you'll enter your email address, so I can always email the winner, but just make sure you fill it out before leaving if you have to go. <laughs> <laughs> He's grabbing a cone. Okay, here's so. our e-bike obstacle course. Oh, no. We'll show you the, verse, the uh, maneuverability. Uh, it okay. comes about 80% assembled. What's that? Uh, as how assembled does it come? Oh. So uh, I always like to say you just have to put things in place and tighten some screws. You pretty much just have to attach the front tire, handlebars, pedals, seat, and um, with the e-bikes you actually have to do the front disc brake, but we have videos on all of that. Last time, actually, I assembled it live. It was kind of a mess, but um, it's doable. <laughs> okay, I'll tackle this on full throttle, or I mean, with the throttle, no pedaling. Are you pedaling. weaving Hopefully, in and out? Huh? Weaving in. Okay. Hopefully, I didn't put the cones too close. <laughs> oh no, we're good. That's full throttle. Not full throttle. It's like motorcycle. It's hard. It's a little bit difficult to do it on pedal assist because you get a little bit more of a um, a jolt. But you can really, you have really good control with the throttle. Actually, there we have it. That's probably a little bit closer than I should have done. What kind of surfaces can you ride on? Um, so the fat tire. I mean, you could do full on. You know kind of ro like semi rocky trails with the fat tire with these you could do hard pack trails and grass I was actually contemplating like taking it up over the grass right there <laughs> I was thinking about that with the fat tire Why let's see I mean you could even take this one up there um, I don't know if you can see the hills behind us but there's like a dirt a dirt road back there a lot of people like to mountain bike and I've taken the regular every, every journey not the fat tire and it fared fine. You just want to watch out for rocks or anything that could puncture the tires. Yeah, I mean, it rides super easy on grass. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, I mean, grass, the, the beauty with the motor too, and the pedal assist is like going a little bit off road. makes it so easy with the pedal assist, you know, like if you had to go through some grass or cut through a park or like, you know, I remember growing up, like riding a bike on grass and things and it gets, you know, it's so hard, but in this case, yeah, just kick on the pedal assist or go up to level five or do whatever makes it good for bad knees. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Cause you can basically dictate, especially the every journey. Cause I think it takes a little bit more pressure off the knees, but you can dictate how much stress or how much exertion you want on your muscles and your body. And I think that's, what's interesting is a lot of people think, Oh, it's an e-bike. It's not good for exercise. I've heard the opposite in a lot of, for a lot of reasons. One, like take me for an example, last weekend I did a 15 mile ride and that was just a quick, I basically did it in like 45 minutes, which is pretty fast on like a cruiser type bike like ours. And I had it in pedal assist, but I was pedaling really hard the entire way to keep the speed up. And I think because of that, I worked harder than I would have worked if I didn't have the motor. The other, so the other thing is like, people want to go farther. You know, it's fun to kind of push the limit with an e-bike. Cause you're like, Oh, I made it 10 miles. Can I go 15? Can I go 20? And at least in the back of your head, if you've got that power, you can always rely. Like if I need it, it's there. Like that's kind of what I did. I tried to do as much as I could without it. And then I was like, okay, I can take a break. So it's almost like exercising. You can give yourself a break on the bike as you see fit by using the motor. So like, can, can it be completely not good for exercise? Of course, if you just do the motor the entire time. But I think you guys would find, I think a lot of people find you end up playing around with the usage of power and you end up doing more work than you thought you would do by having an electric bike, you know? And that's the cool thing about an electric bike versus like a scooter or something is the option is always there. So it makes it more fun. How hard is it to lift these onto a car rack? That would have been a good thing to do. Oh yeah. Um, it's actually not that much more difficult than a standard bike because um, you can take the batteries off. Now you do have the you do have the motor obviously in the rear, but I mean, can you lift it? I can, yeah. Well, here, so Alana's, you know, not huge. <laughs> it's heavy. Like <laughs> when it's me, Nate always helps. But so you can see that in the rear, it's heavier, obviously. And if we were to take that battery out, does the key in there? I have it. Oh, this is actually a good little demo. Oh no, so, no, that's around the block. Wait, maybe that's the right key. Try that key. <laughs> yep. Yeah, okay. Now just try again. Try lifting it. <laughs> really putting me <laughs> to the test here. Yep. Oh, see? So really getting the battery out of there makes it quite a bit more light. So for car racks or bringing up stairs, you could bring the battery up first, put the battery in the car, put the bikes on the rack. Um, you have to put the key in. All right, here we go. So here, why don't you hold that? Anything else? Questions? Any other demonstrations we can do? It'd be cool to take you guys out onto the street and show you we've got some pretty big hills up here, which if we really wanted to, you could try to get the camera down here. I could probably ride with you guys. You want to try? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Are we well, I was going to say, or I could, you could shoot me like riding up. the top up. of the hill? Anyways, if you can take it with, let's try. Cause you're on 4G, right? Or 5G, yeah. I'll watch the bikes. <laughs> you're not gonna come, oh, we gotta. Well, you think it's okay to leave the stuff here? That's a good question. All right, ready when you are. I'll go in front of you. Would that be easier? 
Okay, Nate is <laughs> risking his life for the, the 630 live demo, but we'll take you up the hill back here. All right, here we go. Live cameraman coming through. So I'm just going to coast along in my throttle. I'm going at about nine miles an hour. Watch out, we got a car here. Okay. Oh, still with us? So, yeah, I'm just kind of using the throttle and coasting that we can sometimes I find that with the pedal assist if I pedal I actually get going too like faster than I want to go so I may just actually turn I'm gonna turn it off right now and just pedal because we've got a downhill so and I mean you can tell like I'm riding normal and I'm not exerting myself anymore, you know, like on this bike versus a normal bike. All right, we can just do this right here. So, I don't know if you guys can... Are you going to be cool doing this? Yeah. All right. I don't know if you can see kind of what this hill looks like, but it's pretty... We should probably go to the other side of the street. Just for the sake of... Okay, so this is a pretty good sized hill, I would say, wouldn't you? Yep. All right, so we're gonna go for it. Problem now is I'm in, okay, so I'm gonna use a little throttle and get going. You can see like, with the pedal assist, so I'm in pedal assist five, oh, hit a pine cone. <laughs> I'm in pedal assist five right now and I'm like barely doing anything. And this hill's like nothing. And Nate's holding a camera and pedaling. And if you want, I'll here, I'll switch to throttle. So now I'm full throttle. Now obviously full throttle going up a big hill, it's still gonna get me up, but it's not gonna be hitting crazy top speeds. And this is a pretty steep incline. So I'm going to let go of the throttle and pedal. See, look how hard he's working. Should we go, want to try one more or go back? Go back. All right. It's at our highest mark of 117. Wow. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining on our e-bike live demo. We're out. Check out the view. San Clemente, California, 630 headquarters. Sorry, I, I, felt, I forgot I had a microphone on, but we're just cruising down here. Now we do have disc brakes on the e-bikes.
so the braking power is a little bit more. And we'll just turn back. And here we are. I mean, it really just makes rides that much more enjoyable, especially if you've got a lot of hills. And like I said, yeah, I mean, so I'll just turn the pedal assist off now. Now I'm just riding like a normal bike. And I'm in fifth gear. I'll just go ahead and put it in downshift. I'm in fourth now. We're just cruising. Probably actually want to be in like fifth. All right, so let's go to sixth. There we go. What's that? Kara's <laughs> Hey, Kara. And let's just do a little throttle, take us home. Watch this incline, Nate. <laughs> I'm at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 miles an hour. And we're back. Yep. Yeah, so you guys can see the hills, no problem. Super easy. You can get up there without any exertion if that's what you need. And we're back, and we still got plenty of bars on the battery. Yeah. Any other questions coming up? Can it go? So legally. Full throttle, only 20 miles an hour max, and pedal assist, technically, it's supposed to be top speed 28, but we obviously can't control. I mean, if you can pedal faster than that, you know, sky's the limit with pedal assist, but full throttle, it's going to be 20. You ready? Okay, so, oops. So I'll pick the winner in a minute, so if you haven't entered... You have one minute to get your entry in, and then I'm closing it off, and then I'm going to pick the winner. So, fill out the form now if you haven't yet. If you already filled it out, don't fill it out again, because we're, <laughs> if there are any double entries, the extra entries will be deleted, so it won't make a difference if you enter more than once. So, <clears throat> right now we have 244 entries. The odds are pretty good for you. How many entries? 244. Oh, that's good. Jim, thanks for joining. Okay. Matthew, good to have you. Do some live shout outs here while we wait for the. Uh, <laughs> okay, the I just started close. my timer, so you have a minute starting okay, now. Okay, one minute. Allison, <laughs> thanks for coming. Oh, good. Gosh, you can't you guys can't feel this breeze either, but what a nice day today. We've actually had some pretty overcast weather down here by the beach. It's finally clearing up. <laughs> Go ahead and take okay. my helmet off. I see some last minute entries coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty seconds. Stacy says hi from North Carolina. Hey, Stacy. Thanks for coming to watch. Does she have a 630 already? Remember, check out the app. I'm going to log a ride right after here um, on the e-bike. I want to see everyone else logging rides on there, too. And if you already have the app, choose your bike so we can see what bike you're riding. Okay, that's time. He just made it in time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my watch won't stop. Okay. Okay. Give me a minute to put these over. Thanks, David. Appreciate that. If you guys like the demos, let us know in the comments. Um, we'll keep doing these. Maybe we should get some more on-location demos, like go to some cool locations. That would be cool. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a mystery spot. Tune into the live to see where we are next. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I should have done this on my laptop. 
Alana's feeling pressure. <laughs> this is too much pressure. Okay, here we go. Hey, Susie from DC. Thanks for coming. She's got the app. Awesome. We're excited about it too. Honestly, the app's super exciting for us. Glad you guys are liking the demos. Kevin, thank you. Crushed it. Love it. Stacy's crossing her fingers, hoping she wins. Okay. Alana has somehow ended up in I another stress. Oh, here we have a winner. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you saw it shuffling. So, Juanita Alexander, you are the winner. Juanita, congratulations. Congrats. So, we will contact you. We have your email address. Um, answer any questions you have about picking out your bike. Congrats. Thanks, thank you, everyone who tuned in. Jennifer, thank you. Matthew, glad you like the bikes. <laughs> All right. Make well, sure to let us know if there's any other types of demos or questions or anything you want us to address in future live events. It's always really fun doing this because it gives us a good idea of what people want to know and what people want to see on YouTube and our other social media channels. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. These are a lot of fun. Next time we'll do another demo. I like the idea of a mystery location, so you guys will have to join to see where we end up for the demo. So thanks for watching. And with our signature outro, don't forget, it's your journey, your experience. Enjoy the ride. Bye.